And good evening, hockey fans. Welcome back to the Hockey Writers Live, the last day of March already. Getting into the nitty gritty of the season with just just a few days left of the trade deadline here. So welcome in. We're going to jump right into this because we have a very special guest tonight. Second half of the show, we're going to have a big panel talking about the trade deadline. But right now we are honored to be joined by the general manager of the Columbus Blue Jackets, Yarmo Kekaline. And Yarmo, welcome. It's really, we really appreciate you taking the time to do this tonight. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate this. I guess we'll just jump right into this. Um, boy, what a frustrating little set this is to have the two games in Detroit happen the way they happen. And then to have a game last night in Tampa Bay where you get a good result out of it. And it seems like it kind of pumps up the team. Just what do you think has been the biggest issue in having the dips like you did in Detroit and then having a game like Tampa Bay like that? Well, that's a great question. I think we, if we had the, the clear answer to that, we would have figured it out already and this wouldn't be happening again. But um, I thought we played even better against Carolina yep. the, um, the game before we went to Detroit. So we thought we were taking a step into the right direction and, and took two steps or maybe three steps right back into the wrong direction in Detroit, probably playing the worst two games of the season and, and, and important four points lost in that weekend but uh managed to beat tampa last night and and uh had another opportunity tomorrow to go at it and we're still in the hunt we're still in the race so i guess that's that's the positive thing but the whole year has been a bit too much of a roller coaster and we're all trying to figure it out mm. and i know a lot of people are talking about you know patrick line and obviously the trade that happened and you know, he's kind of going through a little bit of a slump right now where he's not scoring goals, not hasn't been getting too many shots um, either, but he is somebody that you know very well. So because of what you know about him, what gives you the confidence to know that he'll kind of find his way through and kind of snap out of this? Because he's always done it. He's, he's been a streaky player in his career. He snapped out of it and he's, he's been a consistent goal scorer throughout his career before he even came to North America and, and he had his slumps in Winnipeg and snapped out of them and has, has been uh, has been a good goal scorer in this league so he'll figure it out it's a different team and and uh, different uh, line mates and, and you got to find the chemistry and got to get yourself going and get your confidence up and have a little success the little things help a lot and and uh, you should be able to straighten it out and it's no secret that the center ice position this year has been a struggle. Uh, obviously, Pierre Luc Dubois being traded, Miko Koivu retiring, Max Domi finds himself on the wing. I've had a couple chances at center as of late, but just in your mind, Yarmo, how has that progressed to you? Are you seeing tangible progress from the Jack Roslevics of the world, the Kevin Stenlins of the world, you know, things like that? Yeah, it's work in progress. Both are young players. They're, they're trying to figure out the both, both end of the ice. Um, both ends of the ice, I should say. It's a 200-foot game, and that's why center ice is such a demanding position that, that it's you're not only relied upon to uh, create offense and drive the play, as we call it, through the neutral zone and into the offensive zone, but it's, it's a big responsibility defensively, and that's why, that's why it's such, a, uh, such an important position for every team. Max Domi, too, is somebody who struggled early, but it's, he's showing some signs as of late. Are you starting to see that he's getting a little bit more comfortable now? Yeah, yeah, he's played much better, and we always try to look behind the results, not not just the points. And we uh, urge the players not to uh, just uh, concentrate on what the uh, score sheet says after the game, but how they play, because the results will come if you play the right way. And and uh, we believe that Max Domi can be a good addition at center ice for us. It's best season in the NHL. In Montreal, he had 71 points when he played centerman. And, uh, you know, again, it's, it's it takes a little bit of time to get used to your new team and your new line mates and all that. But, uh, you know, we believe he can be a big part of our future. Yarmo Kekalayan joining us here on the Hockey Writers Live. Um, you, you've always said that the team will kind of steer you in how you're going to handle the trade deadline. It's going to be coming up here on April the 12th. What have they shown you? in the dips in the, in the valleys and the highs and the lows about where they're at overall, just what have they shown you? You froze there a little bit. Oh. I couldn't hear the part oh. of the last uh, part. Just of what has the team, you know, the, the deadline's coming up here. What have they shown you? I know that they're, 
going to help kind of steer your direction on how you're going to handle the trade deadline. What have they shown you in, in this last little stretch? Well, you always, always want to compete for a playoff spot. You always want to stay in the hunt. And you're, you're never going to give up on that. And that's, that's the main thing. We're all, all in this business to win the Stanley Cup and, and trying to trying to get into the playoffs first. And after that, there's 16 teams left and, and anything is possible as we've seen in the past. So um, that's, that's, we, we've seen some very bright spots this year where we've beaten some very good teams. We've beaten Tampa twice now out of three games that we played them and, and we've beaten Carolina and they're the top the top teams in this division. And if you make the playoffs, you're going to have to play one of those teams in the first and probably another one in the second round if you get there. So, you know, this is such a, uh, there's such parity in this league and, and we've seen that in the past that if you can get into the playoffs, really anything is possible. We beat Tampa Bay in their record season uh, record regular season and we beat them for four nothing in the playoffs and and uh, and deserved it so um you know it's uh, there's going to be 16 teams making the playoffs and there's going to be a a few very good teams missing the playoffs this team this year with the way the uh, the divisions are divided up so uh, the goal is to make the playoffs and, and every team in this league has the goal to win the stanley cup but uh we got to get more consistent. That's what we've we've seen so far. Is the inconsistency is maddening, and and we want to get better. We got to get better at it soon. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, it's we're going to fall out of the race. There's probably three teams right now that are competing for the uh, or or four teams right now competing for one spot with yeah. Chicago and Nashville and, and and Dallas and us and and they're all good teams. So if we want to stay in that race, we got to find consistency, and we've got to find it fast. Now, with that said, how important are these next seven games up to the deadline in terms of evaluating your position? Will that have a, a huge bearing on where you might go? Yeah, absolutely. We, we'll, we'll see where we are in, in, in seven to ten days here. and Hopefully we're in the race and, and um, you know, building, building towards the playoffs and, and gaining momentum. But, uh, you know, we've got to take it one game at a time. Every game is just as important. Whether it's the, uh, the the first game of the year or the next game coming up, but that's that's why it was such a disappointment when we played two such poor games against Detroit. Um, you know, no disrespect to Detroit, but we, we should have been able to compete harder and and get a better better result out of those two games. Hmm. And just one last question on just the market overall, because it's a different year, obviously, you know, there's quarantine rules going on. There's teams that might be cap strapped. They might not have the money to be able to do anything. We obviously have another expansion draft come up with Seattle. So just, do you feel like that this could be possibly a quieter deadline, just knowing that there's a lot of different outside factors and played more so than usual? Yeah, it could be. Canada reduced the quarantine out of seven days. So maybe, maybe, the seven Canadian teams can be more in it with the U.S. teams, whereas if it was two weeks, probably wouldn't have made a lot of sense to acquire a player at the deadline and, and have him miss almost the the, uh, the remainder of the regular season. And, and, and especially if you're right on the bubble of making the playoffs and trying to get get the push to 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 get in, it'd be hard to add a guy at the deadline and not not have him for the full remainder of the regular season. But now now the quarantine's a week, so that makes things a little bit easier. The cap's obviously a, a, a big question mark for a lot of teams and will be in the off season as well with the cap staying flat. So uh, th those are those are not easy decisions because it's probably going to have to be money money in and money out and it's hard to improve your team that way. And and uh, we're we're in a pretty fortunate situation right now. We have some cap space to to do whatever uh, we need to do. But I think the only moves that we're going to do are are the ones that are going to benefit us now, but, but also into the future. And I know you've been with this, through this with Vegas, just how well positioned do you feel like you are in preparing for any Seattle implications? Well, I think we're in good shape this time. Last, last time around, we were in tough, tough situation because we were, we knew we were going to lose a real good young player and there was no way around it. And um, so this, this time I think we were, Pretty well protected. I think we're fortunate that Elvis Merzlikens is exempt from the uh, expansion draft. So we have two really good goalies. One is exempt and one can be protected. So that's a huge start right there. And, and I'm probably going to go with three and 
seven and, and um, you know, we can, we can protect the, uh, the core people that we have in our group and, and many of our young guys are exempt. So I think we're in good shape. Speaking of the goaltenders, what, what have you thought of both Merzlikens and Corpus Salo? They've each had kind of up and down years dealing with injuries, dealing with a little bit of inconsistent play. Elvis has played actually very well these last, this last little bit of stretch here. Just what have you seen from both of them this year so far? I think they've both, both been excellent. Um, so some of the, the, the nights that may look outside that they've had a tough night, it's, it's also been the team that's had a tough night in front of them and, and there's no goalie in the world that can, that can make all the saves. Corpy's made probably five save of the year saves this year with, with his stick and, and Pat coming out of nowhere all the way from the other side to make a save. And, and those, those are the ones that, that you see in the highlights for, for the, the remainder of the year. But um, like I said, you know, if you give up too many grade eight chances, there, there's not a goalie in this world that can make those saves, um, you know, one after another. And, and, and they've both been excellent. It, it certainly hasn't been our goaltending that's been a problem this year. Just got a couple more for you here, Yarmo. Um, on the goaltenders, Daniil Tarasov um, just came over from Russia, assigned to the Cleveland Monsters. I guess, is there a quarantine that they have to go through before that they're allowed to play? Do you have any idea when he might be able to make his Monsters debut? Yeah, he should be ready this weekend. There's a little different quarantine rules in the American League level. Uh, Daniel Tarasov also had COVID uh, this year already. And so mm. he's, he's come in and he's, he's going into the AHL quarantine program and getting tested and all that stuff or although i don't think he needs to get tested since he recently had it um so he should be ready to go by the weekend i think yeah they have a home game on saturday against grand Rapids, so that that definitely be must watch stuff there that'd be his north american debut if that does happen um just i guess a couple injury updates we want to ask but we saw gus nyquist take practice in tampa today any idea when we might be able to see him at all? Because he's around the five-month mark, a little before that since he had that surgery. Yeah, the five-month mark's coming here in a few days, and, and hopefully uh, it won't take much longer, You know, maybe a couple of weeks to strengthen his shoulder and, and get back to 100%. We can't wait to have him back. I think we, we've really missed him. Uh, not a lot of people are talking about him, but he was an excellent player for us last year. We could really use his poise and confidence and, and smarts with the puck. And he settles things down and he's a great guy in the room and this provides a lot of leadership into our group. So uh, that, that'll be a big addition to our group. And another one, I know Emil Bemstrom is still dealing with an issue. He was originally scheduled to miss a week. I think it's been two weeks now. Um, any sort of update you can provide there? Yeah, he's... he's uh rehabbing and getting stronger from his injury and and uh you know it's uh it's something that i leave in the uh, hands of the medical people and then when they tell me he's ready he's ready what is it about him that i i know you're a big fan of his and i know you had a, a pretty good year last year with 10 goals a little bit of a struggle this year before the injury what do you think we'll see from him when, when he comes back or what gives you the confidence to know that he's going to be something pretty good moving forward here well, I would look at it at a, at a little bit broader picture. I'd look at it like, what, what's he going to provide in the next three or five years? That's that's how we we look at the young players. I often say that it could take five to eight years from the draft before they make an impact. He broke into the league with pretty good numbers, 10 and 10. Didn't really play the the, uh, the, the way we expected or hoped that he could in the first year in the league, but that's a big jump. But at the same time, how many times have you seen a guy – teenager scored 23 goals in the Swedish league. The, the people have done it before him or their, their jersey are, are hanging in the rafters or one is playing as a number one center for, for Vancouver Canucks right now. So he, he's in unbelievable company having accomplished that, done that and doing that on an elite level in Sweden usually translates pretty well into the North. Uh, last question for you, Yarmo. I know you be successful. Can... Yes. He's strong enough, he's fast enough, he's quick enough and, and smart enough. So it's just a matter of figuring out his game and getting back to doing what what, what his biggest strengths are. And, and last question for you, Yarmo. I know you recently came out and gave Torts a vote of confidence to know that he's been through some stuff before and he's been able to figure it out. Just what have you felt of the way that he's handled, especially the recent stretch? You know, he had the downtime in Detroit, the good game here. Just how has he handled everything since um, you gave him that vote of confidence? 
he's an experienced coach. He's been around ups, ups and downs with many organizations. There's a reason why he's been in the league for so long. And he's, he's a hell of a coach. So that's, you know, I have, I have confidence in him that he, he can get our group playing consistently. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's the winningest U.S. board coach for a reason. Well, Yarma, this has been awesome. Really appreciate you taking time to sp um, spend some time getting us ready, getting us updated for the trade deadline and things around the Columbus Blue Jackets. Best of luck to you now and the rest of the way. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Yarma. That was Yarma Kekalainen, and the um, general manager of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, wonderful 15 minutes, some really good updates in there about Gus Nyquist, about Emil Bemstrom, and uh, you know he believes in Tortorella. I mean, I think we knew that. Um, had that big win in Tampa yesterday. They're going to have a big challenge tomorrow in Tampa. You know, they've lost three in a row now. And the next seven games are going to be obviously huge. He admitted that he probably needs all that time to find out which direction this team is going to go because they're, you know, they're only three points back. They're still in this race. It's nothing's been decided at all at this point. And, you know, he certainly left the door open to make some tweaks for sure. If, if they're close enough to the race. So we really appreciate his time tonight and make sure that you hit that like button on Facebook, hit subscribe on YouTube. You will not miss any of these interviews here on the hockey writers live.